Welcome back to DIY Dave and Company. I'm Dave and today we are going to build some canning shelves. I don't know if you've done any canning or having to deal with any of that, but it's really hard to find a pre-made shelf that fits right where you want it and is made for the size cans. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to create a custom-made shelf specifically designed to hold quart sized jars um, although Laura doesn't tend to can in quarts because they're heavier to pick up and, and with her MG she's she has trouble picking them up but sometimes we do but either way it'll be a more compact shelf we can get more up there uh, the pint jars will fit the half pint jars will fit the quart jars will fit basically it'll be perfect for any size jar that she decides to use so the space I've got, I can fit a seven foot tall, four foot wide shelf. So this is gonna be custom made. Uh, and I'm going to make it completely out of scrap wood from other projects that, uh, you know, had some leftover wood and why buy if you can uh, make it for free, right? So come along, this should be fun. Okay, to start with, I had some shelves that were left over from a previous project. Believe it or not, these are exactly four feet long. Now, I am going to have to trim off some. We'll use that as our braces for the shelves. Uh, and, you know, that accounts for the width of the, uh, the slats to hold the shelf up. I've also got some eight foot long two by fours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously cut these off a foot because they are a foot too long. And then I'm going to split them right down the middle. We'll have some two by two uh, shelf slats to uh, put this all together. And then we, of course, have to account for the width, which is two feet, uh, two inches on each side. So that's the reason I'm going to cut the shelf boards off four inches. I'm going to divide those four inches by two and that way I can use each of those to hold up the shelves. So, here we go. And if you don't have a good measuring tape, I highly recommend this particular one. It's 25 feet, will probably cover just about any project you want to do. It automatically locks, so you don't have to worry about pulling it in, and or you don't have to worry about it coming back in on you until you're ready. And then you just press here at the bottom, and it opens it up. It allows it to come back in. So really good I'll put a link for this down in the description if you are interested I don't know if you can see this, but if you line this up with the little zero right here with your saw, then uh, it'll just slice right through.
not sure if you can see this or not but on your circular saw you have these marks that will tell you how far in you are my next and probably the hardest part of this project is going to be splitting these two by fours I'm going to line it up right here with the two inch mark that should give me exactly two inches on each side so let's get to it and of course you've got to be careful you don't want to hit your saw horse so I'm gonna to have to saw in a little ways and then scoot and then saw in a little ways more Well, as you can see, I miscalculated. Two by fours are not really two by four. They are uh, two by three and a half. So obviously I've got a two inch board and I've got a one and a half inch board. But guess what? I'm not real worried about that. This is a custom made shelf. It's not going in for, in for any beauty contest or anything, so uh, still make this work. Not a problem. So now we just get to do the same thing to the second board. Let's go ahead and set this one over out of the way, I think. And even though I messed up on the first one, we're just going to stick to that same pattern so that everything is consistent. Sometimes mistakes happen. You just have to work with it. Alright, so. Now we've got our... Uh, Shelf stands.
All right, so for this, I need my shelves to be exactly four feet wide. These shelves are exactly four feet wide. But I need to account for the two by fours. So I need to take off two inches on both ends if that's what I choose to do. Or I can take off four inches on one end. And then like I said, I'm gonna use those to hold up my shelves. So I'm gonna cut off two inches and then two inches. So here we go. Let's uh, measure this out and go from there. Actually, let's do it this way because that makes more sense. So two inches and four inches. We'll just keep doing that until we've got all of them laid out. All right, so I've gone ahead and draw my lines on here. Once again, this does not have to be perfect. Um, not going for any beauty contest here. It'll have the shelf slats to hold it up. So we're just going for a pretty close. So we're gonna follow my lines and get these done. We've got nine boards to do, so this will be a while. One down, eight to go. And that's it. That's all of the cutting that I'm gonna do. We just need to mark where we want our shelves to be and staple this thing together. And we'll be done. Easy peasy. All right, I know that I don't normally go into these things with a plan, but today with this shelf needing to be an exact fit to where we're wanting it, I drew out a plan. Yeah, it's just a rough sketch. I, but it, it gives me an idea of what I'm doing. Like I said earlier, we're mainly gonna do quart size jars and from the bottom of the shelf to the next bottom of the shelf, I need eight and a half inches. So you gotta figure that shelf width in there when you're trying to make your, figure out what size shelves you're needing. The bottom, obviously with the first shelf slat, I need two inches for one of these. Slide right in there sit right at the bottom and then the first shelf will sit on it. So I need two inches from there and the bottom of that one to the next one, I'm gonna do 14 and a half inches. Why? Because that's a great place for me to store the pressure cooker and the water bath um, and the size that we've got, 14 and a half will give us room to slide it right in there and uh, should be out of the way. And then every other shelf is gonna be eight and a half from the bottom of the shelf to the bottom of the next shelf. So it's not eight and a half between the two shelves, it's eight and a half from the bottom of the shelf to the bottom of the shelf. So I can go through here and I can put lines telling me exactly where to put these things. 
because I'm wanting this to be the bottom. So here we go. So the first mark is going to be two inches. And then from that mark, it's going to be 14 and a half inches. And then from that mark, it's going to be eight and a half inches. And then continue that on until we get to the top of our shelf. So you measure from that mark to where you want the bottom of the next shelf to be. So from that mark to that mark, eight and a half. Now if you only do pint sized jars, measure the jar, figure out how much space you need between, and do your shelves that width. I'm choosing to do it big enough to put a quart jar in there because sometimes we do use quart jars. So there is a little bit of wasted space if we're only doing pint jars. But this will fulfill almost all of our needs. Any size jar will fit here. Be careful because I just marked that one at eight inches instead of eight and a half. That will throw everything off. And I know if you are calculating in your head, this is going to leave a little bit of space at the top. That's okay. There's things like um, freezer bags and stuff like that that we can stick along the top edge. But I'm going to keep working on this, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so as you remember from earlier, we cut our shelves off two inches and two inches. Now you get to see what these are going to be used for. I'm going to put these in on our slats, and our shelves are going to sit right on top of those. Once we get these laid out, then we'll go through and we'll staple our shelves down to these and that will hold the whole thing together and this should carry quite a bit of weight I'm not real concerned about bowing or anything like that so this is pretty much all we need and to do this one of my favorite tools to date is the nail gun um, I'll tell you I don't know what I did before I had a nail gun I couldn't imagine putting nails in all of this so this is going to make life much easier so our first slat we're going to put right here at the very bottom and let's hope that this doesn't split on us I guess we'll find out split it right in two awesome Okay. We'll stop recording now. <clears throat> okay, so I've made some discoveries. I told you uh, when I started this channel, I would show you both my successes and my mistakes. Uh, well, I have discovered that when you're using wood that's probably about 10 years old, even if it looks like it's fairly good and soft, um, it doesn't do well when you hit it with a uh, um, nail gun. It just splits it right in two. So I've had to alter my method a little bit. Uh, let me show you what I'm doing. If you're using older wood, you might want to consider this method as well. What I'm doing right now is I'm lining up the wood right about where it needs to be and I am drilling holes, trying to stay kind of away from the edge. But and this hole is the same size as the nail, so the nail goes in easily into this top piece. There's no further pressure. It's not going to crack it. And just a little bit into the next one so I can line it up right. 
and same here. Just a little. Whoops, kind of got away from me there. But what we can do is we can take a nail and stick in this first hole. Make sure we're getting the right spot. Now it's held in position. And then I can drill the next one. So I'm not going all the way through because we need our nail to actually grip something. But that should be enough to keep us stable. <clears throat> and then good old fashioned hammer. I, the, the nail gun just was too much. As you can see, I shoved the nail pretty much into the next piece of wood. So this is going to take a little bit longer, but it's worth it to use the scrap wood rather than having to go buy new wood. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you the results in just a few minutes. Alright, so that took longer, it was harder, it's still done, got my 14 and a half inch section eight and a half eight and a half eight and a half so we just have to do this on one more side obviously I'm gonna have to cut up a few more of these little boards to uh, make my slats and then we'll put it all together okay I've got my slats to put the shelves on and I have discovered I can get away with using the uh, nail gun for putting the shelves in because I'm nailing into the cut edge of these and kind of going at an angle so it's actually going into the legs as well um, so it's not splitting the wood so that's awesome on that part uh, but I'm going to put these shelves in and uh, we're done it's been a little bit more of a project than it should have been but hey that's normal for me And as you can see, things probably are not perfect. If you are looking for perfect, you're on the wrong channel. I don't do perfect. Perfect takes too long, costs too much. And what I have found, you can make imperfect work. And That's all I need is I need it to work. So, as you can see, once I get all these shelves in here, this is probably going to be one of the most stable shelves you've ever seen. Alright, I'm going to put the rest of these shelves in and uh, check back with you in a minute. Well, there we have it. My shelves for canning are done. We'll be able to organize some of our jars instead of having them sitting around on counters everywhere and stacked up in the floor. We can now put them up on shelves and they'll be safe. Like I said earlier, we could put some slats in here for some port. I don't think we'll need it. 
since we're only doing one layer of cans these are not going to get too terribly heavy I think four foot of shelving will be able to support it all in all this should have taken about an hour and a half two hours it took me a little bit longer because of the issues I had with the uh, board splitting but uh, I'm pretty pleased it's, I'll probably since it's so tall we'll probably want to support it against the you know put a, a brace or two against the wall to keep it from tilting over are my shelves perfectly level probably not but they're they're gonna hold the cans I mean they're they're close enough um, are there little gaps where the boards didn't get kept perfectly straight sure but it was close enough if I were putting this in my living room yeah we would we'd work a little harder to get it perfect putting it down in my pantry down in the basement not worried about it it's functional and that's what's important so if you're looking at building a uh, shelf to do your to put your canning on this was a great method to do if you have any questions just ask them down in the uh, comments and I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can I hope you've enjoyed this I hope it's been helpful don't forget if you like this video be sure to click the like button and also click the subscribe so you'll see any of the other crazy things I get into any of the other crazy projects that I decide to build uh, could be entertaining could be helpful either way Hope to see you next time right here on DIY Dave and Company. Y'all have a great day.